what I do is I also look in human brain tissue of post-mortem brain material and there also you see that these cells are reacting and we are now in the middle of a process also looking at the molecular changes in these astrocytes. So if we find similar things as what we found in our mouse models then I think for sure we really should think about these cells and that would also mean that in the future we have to make also new therapies that will have to be incorporated in the management of the Alzheimer patients as well. The next step is that I'm really trying to uh, prove or to see whether those changes in these astrocytes lead to cognitive problems and I can do that in the mouse model but I'm also looking at synaptic transmission so really with electrophysiology to see whether that changes the neuronal communication and um, I hope to see that if I suppress reactive gliosis, and we have tools to do that genetically in, in models, obviously, that we can really prevent the cognitive impairment. And if that is true, then that would be very important if you think about the Alzheimer patients and about the process that's going on, the molecular process that's going on in their brains. I think that professionals really should be aware of that there's not only amyloid and tau, although there is of course a lot of research um, focus on that and that's also very important but we should also be aware of the other processes that are going on in the brain that are most likely also somehow related to amyloid and tau but I think the, the, the change in the glial field has shown over the last 10 years that these cells are really very very important and that we really should not neglect them in any type of disease but especially Alzheimer's disease.